By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing against patron Marco. He is back on the channel and uh, he's got a pretty cool blue Tron deck with some original choices. I've got a really nice deck photo of his deck, so we're going to discuss that in a moment. I'm playing against him with a troll disco deck. It's red and black. I really enjoy playing it and I'm looking forward to showing it here in this episode on the channel. Now, before I dive into the deck decks, I would first like to mention that as always, you can also choose to skip that section. I know that some people prefer to first go to the game, then check out the deck decks after. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below because there you will find several timestamps. One of the timestamps reads MTG Games. Click on there, it'll take you straight to the game action. And also, if you'd like to maybe play a game against me or make an episode like I did here with Marco, the best way to do that is by going to patreon.com slash timmytalks, check out my Patreon program, and uh, yeah, maybe we're gonna make uh, an episode together in the future, who knows. Anyway, um, now that you're fully informed about all the ins and outs, we are ready to dive into the deck deck section. I'm gonna start with the deck of my opponent. Let's take a look at Marco's Blue Tron deck. And here we see the blue Tron deck of Marco. Now, when you follow the channel, you know that I love Tron. I love making Tron decks. So I'm always excited to see a new one. I think blue Tron makes sense because when you're playing with blue, obviously you've got access to copy artifact. So that already makes it a really good match with an artifact heavy deck. Now, remember the Tron lands, if you've got the mine, the power plant and the tower, they tap for additional mana, right? Normally they tap for one mana, but when you've got all three on the table, the tower taps for three, the mine taps for two, the power plant taps for two. So you have a lot of mana. Uh, the question of course is what are you gonna do with all that mana? And when I'm looking at this deck, I'm not really quite sure what he wants to do with all that mana, to be honest. He's got a brain geyser, yes, so that's something to, to sink the mana in. And of course he's got some more expensive creatures to cast, I guess, I mean, I see a trike there, but yeah, I really wonder in this specific deck, why would you want to have Tron? He's also only playing with nine Tron lands instead of 12. Now that is something that I find quite interesting, you know, because that can be an option too, to instead of playing with all the Tron lands, play with less lands. The reason to do that is because then you want to have more colored mana, right? You want to have a better mana base and therefore you don't play with four towers, four plants, four mines. In this case, you play with three of each instead of four of each. So, I mean, that's interesting. When I'm looking at the build, another thing that I really notice here are the two stasises on the left side. I actually really like that plan because I think what he wants to do is, you know, get a little lock going on, you know, have a Howling Mine on board, a Vice on board, and then get a stasis out, you know? And that means that I'm probably gonna take a lot of damage. I'm unable to untap because of the stasis. So I can't really, you know, play out anything, do anything, and I'm still gonna take a lot of damage from the vice every single turn. So maybe then I get killed by a vice. And remember this deck is also playing with copy artifacts. So if it can have like double vice, double howling mine and the stasis on the battlefield, things can go very quickly. So I actually like that strategy. I also really like the three clones in this deck. I am a little bit surprised that there's only one Triskelion in here. I would definitely, if I would build this deck cause I like the idea of the stasis, you know, and the blue Tron thing, I would definitely play with four trikes myself. But while I'm saying this, I know that Marco recently got back into Magic again. So this is all these cards that he still has from his old collection. So probably he doesn't have access to four trikes, right? So maybe Marco, this could this game could be a good reason for you to maybe get four trikes after this. Or, you know, what do I know? Maybe this deck works fantastically with just the one trike. I guess that's what we're going to find out. But at first glance, those are the few things that I would maybe you know, change. Uh, I really do love the Relic Barrier Howling Mine, and I love, like I said earlier here in the deck deck, I love that stasis plan. Another thing that I have to mention here is that this deck photo is missing like 12 or 13 cards, right? And I believe, and I remember Marco, I think you sent me a message saying, I wanna keep that a secret because there's some secret tech to the deck. So <laughs> I'm, I'm curious. To, to find that out. I mean, that is that is killer. That is a lot of fun. Anyway, this is the deck of Marco, or at least the part of the deck that I can show you. Uh, now let's take a look at my deck, Troll Disco. And here you see the Troll Disco deck. It's a pretty well-known archetype in old school. What it does is you're playing with four Nefneral's discs. You destroy everything with your discs, but because you are playing with trolls, you can regenerate them because Setch Troll and Often Troll have a regeneration. So you regenerate your creatures and your opponent is losing all the creatures. That is basically at the heart 
of every troll disco deck and that's exactly what's happening here as well now then you go and try to find uh, you know add creatures that go well with the nef's disc and then obviously you have mishra's factory which are brilliant with nef Neural's disc but you also have rook egg which is just really fun with the disc rook egg an o3 creature from uh, arabian nights and when it gets uh, destroyed when it goes to the graveyard you get a 4-4 bird token at the beginning of the next end step so you get a nice 4-4 flyer in return right so you put your rook x on the table and then you crack them with your disc and you get nice 4-4 flyers in return and again your opponent of course has just lost all their creatures and actually everything except for the lands because of the nef's disc right so that's really the combination that you want to want to do with this now there are some you know, neat little tricks in here. For example, I'm playing with an Earthquake. So Earthquake and Rook Egg, again, it's a really nice synergy, right? If I've got multiple eggs and I can get multiple 4-4 flyers and at the same time probably kill some creatures of my opponent, deal some damage to my opponent and get some creatures 4-4 flyers back. So it's just really good bang for your buck. So that's some synergy there with the Earthquake. I'm also playing with one Sacrifice and one Howl from Beyond. I just think that's really funny. So there could be a scenario where I, for example, you know, attack with a creature, then play my Sacrifice on the Rook Egg, second the Egg, so I get four mana, I can use those mana to pump into a potential Howl from Beyond, deal three extra points of damage, and also, again, get a 4-4 Flyer at the beginning of the next end step, because I sack my Rook Egg. So that's, there. you know, there are some little tricks in here, and I just really enjoy playing with one of I also like this one, Anime Dead. I think Anime Dead, it, 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 it works together really well with the, the, uh, the disc, and it doesn't work together well with the disc. The reason it doesn't work together well with the disc is because, of course, the disc destroys the Anime Dead, the reason is it works very well with the disc is because, hey, you're playing with discs, so you're going to kill a lot of creatures of your opponent that will be in the graveyard. So there's probably a really nice, juicy target to get uh, back with your anime debt. So, you know, that's kind of that that thing. Um, I, I also chose to put two Will-O-The-Wisps in this deck kind of because of nostalgia, because it's a creature everybody used to play. And now you see it less and less because of, uh, of the mazes of If, I guess. You know, they're just uh, a better option usually than your, your Willow. But I really like Willow still. And I think Willow goes together quite well, of course, with the disc. And it's still a really good creature. It basically stops everything. And it's going to buy me some time, you know, to get the disc out and, uh, and to kind of control the board from there. So I think it's a good match. I'm also playing with one Jam Day Tome. The main reason for that is that I kind of, I want to have some kind of card draw. You know, if I'm really stuck, I want to have some kind of way out of, uh, out of it. Maybe with my book, you know, I can draw out of it. And of course, I've got a Wheel of Fortune as well, talking about card draw. That's probably the better card to get me out of a sticky situation. And what I like about playing with black is that I have access to Demonic Tutor. So all those one-offs become a little bit better because you're playing with, with Demonic Tutor. So I really like that. Um, then when we're looking at the sideboard, uh, there, there, there's one card that I just want to highlight because I think it's a really cool card. The card's Immolation. And Immolation is a card from Legends, gives plus two, minus two, an enchant creature. And it's really nice because it works really well on the Rook Egg, right? Because the Rook Egg is an O3. So then with an Immolation on it, it becomes a 2-1 and you can start attacking with it. And your opponent doesn't want to block it because then they get a 4-4 flyer. So it's really funny. Um, and it's also really good against like Hypnotic Spectres, for example. So if my opponent is playing with just annoying, you know, two twos and one ones, I will like board my Immolation in and I can use it both ways. I can use it to kill the creatures of my opponent or I can use it to put it on my Rook Egg. Either way, it kind of feels good. So I'm, I'm, I'm testing this out as a sideboard card. I think the rest of the sideboard is pretty, uh, pretty obvious. Anyway, this is my Troll Disco deck. And now that we've discussed both decks, let's go to the match. Game number one here is about to begin. I'm sitting on the right playing my Disco Troll deck. Starting here with a Batlands and Marco is sitting on the left there with the huge crap. And he's playing a blue Tron, so I'm expecting to see a lot of artifacts from his side of the table. With the nice see-through sleeves, very old school. I think I have a pack of those as well somewhere. Anyway, let's see what he's going to do. Our turn one, island, tapping the island. Ooh, there's a vice. That means some early damage for me. Six in hand, meaning two damage, going to drop to 18 here. Drawing my card for turn, going to go back up to seven in hand. Playing a Swamp, tapping both. What are we going to see? Okay, there's a Tutor, Demonic Tutor. That's pretty good. Wonder what I'm going to look up with the Tutor, though. Perhaps a Soul Ring. Because then I can just uh, kind of empty out my hand uh, quicker. Wouldn't be surprised if that's my play. Because, for example, next turn I could then play Land, Soul Ring, Setch Troll, and have Regeneration Mana open. Another option could be, of course, Mind Twist. It's a little bit yucky, but it's really good. 
But then again, if I pick up Mind Twist, I'm probably not going to use it straight away. I wonder, you know, maybe a disc. It, it just so much depends on what I have in my hand, of course. Anyway, uh, it's now Marco's turn. He's playing a power plant. So he's got an island and a power plant. Tapping both here. Copying the black vice. Ooh, that means four points of damage for me next turn. Exactly. Taking my turn. Four points of damage here. Dropping to 14. Drawing a card. So again, going uh, back up to seven. Playing another bat lance. What am I going to do? Are we going to see? Yeah, there's the soaring. I think I picked this one up with the uh, with the tutor. Tapping four here. What am I going to do? A disc, perhaps? Oh, a gem day tome. Okay, so maybe I had a gem day tome in hand already when I tutored. That makes the soaring even better, of course. You know, with the gem day tome in hand. So four cards in hand, meaning I don't take any damage anymore. Marco finding a mine. So it's got a power plant and a mine. Only needs a to uh, tower to have Tron. If he can find a howling mine, that would be pretty difficult for me. Okay, there's a relic barrier. So he can use the relic barrier to tap down my soul ring. Going to draw a card for turn. He's not tapping down the soaring yet. So I guess I'm lucky there. Not taking any damage, of course, because I had four in hand. Playing a land, so four in hand again. Am I going to use... Oh, I'm not going to use the Tome, though. Instead, I'm going to play out the Rook Egg. Three cards in hand. There's a pass. If Marco can find a Howling Mine, that would be pretty good for him. Also with the, uh, with the Relic Barrier there. Finding a Maze of If. Tapping the mine. Okay, there's a soul ring. So he also found a soul ring here. Let's see what else he can do. He's got four mana. I know he plays with Suchi. He plays with clones. Not really anything to clone here, by the way. And now he's going to use his relic bearer to tap down my soul ring. So I'm going to use the mana from the soul ring probably here to draw an extra card with the book. Exactly, this is what I'm doing. I'm going to go up to 4 and then draw my card for turn. I'm going to go up to 5. Let's see what I can do. Can I put some pressure on the board? Can I find like an often troll or a set troll? Okay, Mishra's Factory. That can start attacking next turn as well. 3 mana open. Not doing anything else. Passing the turn. And here we see Marco untapping the Relic Barrier, drawing for turn. What can he do? There is another Power Plant, I believe. Can Marco put a threat on the table? Or maybe find that Howling Mine? He's got a lot of mana, right? He's got six mana. Ooh, another Copy Artifact. I wonder what he's going to copy. Probably my Gem Day Tome, right? I think it's going to copy my Gem Day. So I'm going to untap again. Probably, yeah, Marco now wants to tap the Sol Ring. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to stack it in a way that I first take the Vice damage and then I draw a card after. Right, so that I don't take any damage from the Vice, but I still get to draw a card. So now I've got six total. Not taking any damage. And let's see if I can play something out. Probably a land will go to five. And then if I can play a Troll, for example... Tapping three here. What do I have? Okay, there's a set troll exactly. And I've got regeneration mana open as well. So four cards in hand now. I mean, things are looking pretty good, I think. Okay, look at that. Marco now using his copy Gem Day Tome here, of course. Gem Day Tome is so nice when you've got a soaring in play. I mean, it feels almost like it's for free. Marco here finding another island. He was kind of stuck on that one island. So maybe he's got... A double blue card in hand, who knows? We're about to find out, I guess. I mean, he's got a lot of mana. Tapping two blue. Tapping the soul ring. Tapping five in total. What are we going to see? A Vesuvan double ganger. Nice. There's not really a great target. Although, what he could, of course, is target my rook egg. So it's an O3 Rook Egg, and then if I attack with the Set Troll, which I probably won't if he's targeting the Rook Egg, then he can, you know, block on the Rook Egg, get a 4-4 Flyer. So, yeah, I'm probably not going to do that. 
Gonna untap everything, so he's gonna tap down again the soul ring. So we're just gonna do a little same old dance. So I'm gonna draw from the tome, draw from the turn. So I've got six in hand, and now let's see if I can empty my hand again. As long as I can drop a land, it's usually quite possible for me to also play out another card besides that with all that mana to my uh, that I have available here. Tapping three, are we gonna see more trolls? Untapping again, changing my mind it seems. Ooh, there's a mind twist, a mind twist for two. So I guess he only has two cards in hand. So counterspell is gone and it hurts his mind is gone. So that's not too devastating here for Marco. That's not too bad. I mean, the counterspell, yeah, that's not ideal that he loses that, but it's not the end of the world. And now he's going to take his turn again. So no cards in hand anymore for Marco. Now he's got the one from the, uh, from the draw of the turn. Let's see if it's a good one. Tapping four. Okay, there's a Suchi. So next turn he could choose to make his Nevenerals disc, or sorry, his, his Nevenerals disc. Make his Vesuvian double ganger into a Suchi. And then he could put a little bit of pressure on, I guess. So again, drawing a card from the Tome and drawing a card for turn. So doing the same old dance. I've got six in hand now. The board is pretty clogged up, you know, like a disc would be good. That's probably why I said a disc instead of a Suvan Double Gary, because I'm thinking about a disc and like a disc would be quite good right now. Of course, another troll, more creatures hitting the board. Four in hand. So again, I'm safe from the vices and I'm just passing the turn again. That seems to be kind of my strategy, right? Just make sure I don't take any vice damage, kind of draw an extra card, play out some extra stuff. And I guess I'm kind of waiting for that perfect moment to... Um, to play a disc. Let's see what Marco can do. Yeah, it's gonna draw a draw card with the tome, makes sense. Still doesn't have Tron. You know, he needs a tower, then he has Tron. And he's just passing the turn, okay. So he's not really doing anything. And I mean, I'm not complaining. I'm drawing extra cards. I'm playing out extra, sh you know, working on my board state. Almost wanted to swear there. Didn't do it. Didn't do it. There's another swamp. Playing out four. Are we finally going to see a disc? No. A rook egg. I keep thinking that discs are coming, but it's not happening. It would be so good for me if I could find a disc here. I mean, that would, that would really put me in a winning position. And, and yes, of course, and I'm going to destroy my, my soul ring in my book. But I mean, my book has given me so many cards already. And, you know, Marco also has a book. So I think it's important to destroy his book. And I mean, it'll just demolish his entire board. And I can just then attack with two 4-4 four, four flyers and two trolls. I mean, that's pretty insane. Marco here, by the way, using his uh, copied tome to draw some extra cards. Trying really to find that card that will get him out of this standstill position. I mean, he needs a flying creature. If he has a flying creature, he can just fly over my forces and start dealing some damage. Plus, he could then copy the flying creature with the uh, Fizuvan. But it looks like he cannot find the cards he's looking for passing the turn again. And again, we're doing that same dance with the Relic Barrier on the Sol Ring. And in response, I draw cards with it. So I've got six in hand now in total. Going to go down to five again. And Marco's still on 20, by the way. I haven't been able to, uh, to hurt him at all in this game. I'm on 14. Another one. Another Rook Egg. Wow. This is just crazy. There's a Counterspell, though. Counterspell on the Rook Egg. So I'm losing the Egg here. Not the end of the world. I still have two, so that's fine. I am a little bit surprised about this counter. I mean, maybe I would have kept the counter spell to then counter the disc. Then again, I mean, Marco obviously doesn't know the deck and he could think maybe he's got other cards as well to kind of get those Rook X uh, from the battlefield, which I actually do. Oh, look at this. Here we see an Urza's Tower. Yeah, thumbs up from my side here. I'm really happy whenever Tron gets uh, assembled. 
Gives me a good feeling. So that means now the Tron lands tap for additional mana, right? Ursus Tower for three, the Mine for two, and the Plant for two. But it looks like Marco cannot really do anything with all that mana. So he's just passing the turn to me. And now I've got six in hand, playing a Mountain. Five in hand. Let's see what I can do. Tapping three. Am I going to play out another Troll? I haven't played out a single often troll yet. I mean, this is such a silly game now. We've been in a standstill for so long. Wow, there's the often troll. Oi, oi, oi. And this one is really cool. It's an altar where often troll looks like a uh, protocol sorcerer. It's a really sweet altar. And I got it at the often troll cup, which is a really great old school event. A really big tournament held in Leeuwarden, the Netherlands, every year. You can find uh, the matches played there uh, from uh, last year's edition on the channel, by the way. So yeah, even more trolls for me. The problem is I can't really do anything with them. I mean, I guess if Marco now has two Suchis, I could consider attacking. No, not even, because he's got mates. He, he can block my trolls, not take any damage. It's not really anything I can do. Maybe I'm just thinking about that now. Four cards in hand. Pointing out the troll, but I think... Not really doing... Oh, I'm gonna do something else. Tapping four, okay. Finally the Neverworld's disc. Finally. Now let's see if the disc can stick. If the disc can stick, Marco has a serious problem. So he's got now he's got one turn. Or of course he can counter it. Maybe he's got another counter spell. But I mean this is this is big. This is big. So he's gonna change probably the Vesuvian Double Ganger into a Rook Egg, right? That's what I would do. You know, because then at least he gets a 4-4 flyer out of it. You know, at least that's something. Gonna draw a card for turn. Let's see what's going to happen here. Can he find an answer for the disc? A steel artifact would be really sweet. Okay, drawing a card here with the tome. That would be so funny. Steel artifact on a disc. That would be hilarious. Tapping two islands. What is he going to do? Another one. Control magic. Okay, so he can steal an egg. That is a good idea. Okay, so he's stealing the egg. So now he's got two rook eggs, right? Because I just assumed that he's changed the... Okay, okay. I'm playing now a lightning bolt on my own egg. Why? So that he gets a 4-4 dragon. Uh, sorry, the bird. It's a bird. Uh, the 4-4 bird. And then, of course, I'm going to use my disc. So he's going to lose that token. That's why I'm doing that. Anyway, going to untap everything. And then finally we're going to get that disc activation. Because I mean, the, 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 the game felt really kind of stuck. I think the game really needed this disc activation. I guess we're not there yet, but... I feel like it would be really good for the match. So getting everything in order. Asking Marco if he wants to use his Relic Barrier somehow. You know, one of the things he could do is kind of force me to use the disc. I'm going to tap down your disc and then it's kind of forcing me to use it in my upkeep before I get to draw a card. He's not choosing to do that though, so... It wouldn't matter much, but it's, it's something you could consider doing. Tapping four. Okay, drawing a card makes sense. Probably drawing the last card from my tome here. I could go for an alpha strike, I guess, with the trolls. But what he could also do is do the disc. I guess the best thing to do here maybe is do the alpha strike with the trolls. Okay, I guess I'm not doing that. It depends on what I have in hand. Because if I attack with the trolls, he's going to block them. And, you know, I kind of need to think about maybe put some keep some regeneration mana open. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to tap down my trolls here, of course. 
So the disc is gone. The vices are gone. The table is getting cleared. My book is gone. My soul ring is gone. I need to take those away. It looks like I want to keep them, but I have to put, put them away, though. They're going to go to the graveyard. Attacking now, by the way. Hey, there they go. And the soul ring still. Now attacking with the 2-2. Two -two. But he's got the mace, though. I think I'm forgetting about the mace here. Exactly. Marco using the mace. I mean, Marco's still on 20. I haven't been able to hurt him at all. Anyway, we're both getting a 4-4 flyer. Exactly. So he, that, that Vesuvian was a Rook Ek. Yeah, that makes absolute sense. So actually, Marco didn't do too bad to kind of harness himself against the disc, right? He used the control magic to get the, my Rook Ek. He copied one of my Rook Ek. So that was pretty good. And maybe now, remember, he is playing with a lot of clones. If he can find a clone, he can start copying those 4-4 flyers. That's actually pretty risky. Remember, he's got Tron active as well. So let's say if he's got two clones, he can play them out easily this turn. He's got enough mana, and he would have three 4-4 flyers then. That would be pretty sick. Anyway, he's now playing just an island. That's pretty safe. Going through his graveyard, maybe he's got a recall. I mean, a recall on, um, for example, Control Magic would be pretty good here. Yeah, he's got a recall. It's kind of hard to see what he's going to get back. It looks like he's going to get back the Vesuvian Doubleganger. I like his style. And he's going to play out the Serenip of Freed, so a 3-4 flyer. And he's going to play out the Vesuvian that he just got back. I think if I would have been Marco, I think I also would have pitched the Serenip and would have gotten back the... Uh, control magic as well and then i would have stolen the my 4-4 flyer i mean that would have been really brutal because surrender right now on this board is is not that impressive because of that that 4-4 flyer that i have on the other hand i mean it's not bad either because it can keep attacking with his 4-4 flyers and i'm probably not going to block it because if if i do like if i trade the 4-4 flyers then it means Marco can start attacking me with his Surrender Perfreet as well. So it's it's a pretty difficult situation for me. If I was Marco, I would now just also attack with the 4-4 Flyer. Because if I want to trade, fine. Marco can start punching me for 7 next turn. So it's going to be interesting now to see what he's going to do. So yeah, putting that other token there to kind of show that the Vesuvian is also a 4-4 uh, a Flyer. A 4-4 four, four bird, a red bird. Yeah, I think Marco still wants to attack here, so I was eager to take my turn, but... Marco's like, I don't know, maybe I'm going to attack, and he is going to attack, fly in here. I think this is a good decision. Deciding to block the token here, making the trade. That's, that is a little bit odd, because it means next turn, um, you know, he can attack me for 7. Maybe it means I've got a disc in hand, but even if I have a disc in hand, it still means I'm going to take those seven points of damage. So maybe I should have just taken four instead. Let's see. Okay, I got a Wheel of Fortune. Okay. Putting away two lands, I believe, and we're going to draw seven new cards. I mean, this is kind of an exciting game one, isn't it? We've been playing for a while. This is one of the longer game, game ones on the channel. So drawing a fresh seven. Let's see what we're going to find. Attacking with everything here. And why not? Because I can, I can just regenerate them anyway. And they cannot block those flyers. So now remember Marco does still have that maze. It's all the way tucked away there in the corner. It's hard to see. But there's still a maze of it. So actually he doesn't have to take any damage. Then again, he could be afraid of a bolt. If I've got a bolt in hand. You know, he blocks one of the trolls. I regenerate my troll. Then play a bolt. And that's exactly what he does, right? He's blocking my two sedges, I think. Maybe sending back the off troll. Let's just wait and see. Yeah, so he's blocking an off troll and a sedge. Maybe he's going to take three. Maybe he's forgotten about his maze. Who knows? That would be kind of sweet. Tapping two here, two black. Howl from Beyond. Oh, nice. I'm going to make it a 4-3. That way, kill probably the 4-4 uh, four, four Flyer. Oh, that is funny. That is funny. 
I'm going to do some more. Deal three points of damage here. Yeah, so Marco looks like he's forgetting about the maze. So that's good. That's three, three points of damage. And uh, Marco taking some damage. Going to go down to 17. It's looking better for me now. I mean, the table has now really changed. Oh, and a Willow. That's even better because I can use the Willow to block the Surrendip. So now it's looking really good for me. And, and the annoying thing for Marco here is that I can just keep attacking with my trolls and I can just regenerate the one that he's going to block with the Surrendip. I'm not even losing anything. I'm only gaining. So it's looking really, really good for me. Marco, and tapping your all his lands. So I've got five cards in hand. I'm on 14. Not quite sure how many cards Marco has in hand at the moment, but he's on 17. Oh, 16, of course, because he took the damage from the Surrendip. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, I wonder what he's going to do. I mean, he's got to have a lot of cards in hand after that uh, Wheel of Fortune that I played earlier. And he's got tons of mana. So this is a little bit scary. Okay, first we see a vice. Another vice. Okay, two vices. So really going for that vice plan again, but also tapping a lot of other mana. What is he going to do? Oh, he plays a Brain Geyser. He plays a huge Brain Geyser. Oh, no. Oh, this is really bad. Oh, man. How many cards do I draw here? I Wait a minute. That's a lot. Six, nine, 11 cards, 12 cards, maybe. Wow, that's insane. Look at my count. 10 cards in hand. No more. 15 cards. 17 cards in hand. Two vices on the board. That is insane. That means I'm going to take 26 damage next turn. I mean, I can still play out my instances, but... Yeah, look at that, playing out a sacrifice, but there's nothing else I can do. What a beautiful game win here by Marco. Marco, man, that is a move because you were losing. I had control, but now you have won game one. This shows why Magic is such a cool game. Out of nowhere, nowhere Marco steals this match. This is phenomenal. This is fantastic Magic. Love it, love it, love it, love it. And the good news is this is only game number one because we're going to go to game number two. Game number two, and look at that. I'm taking a mulligan here, a double mulligan, it seems. Five in hand. That is bad. I mean, I, I cannot lose this or else I've lost the game here. Wow, double mulligan. That is bad. Let's, uh, let's see what Marco can do. Starting with a factory pass in good turn. So I've started with a Badlands here. Of course, I was on the play after losing that first game. Got a mountain, only four in hand after taking that double mull. I mean, let's hope that I can find like a Wheel of Fortune. That would be quite sweet. There's a Relic Barrier and a pass. And just passing the turn, not finding any lands. Oh, this is so bad. I need like a Miracle. It's already looking so bad for me here. There's a Howling Mine. Oh, and now Marco's got the Relic Barrier Howling Mine plan online. Oh, that's even worse for me. That is really bad. At least I found land again. Maybe I can do something. Shatter, hopefully. Okay, playing a Sedge. Trying to put some pressure here on Marco. But of course, Marco now is going to untap. He's going to have that little trick with Relic Berry. And Howling Mine is going to draw that extra card for turn. After that, use his Relic to tap the Mine. Yeah, it's such a sweet combination when you've got that online. It's so good. And Marco here playing land number four. Let's see what he can do. Okay, there's a vice. That's not too bad. Tapping down the mine again, passing the turn. So for me, the vice is really not, hasn't really been a problem. Well, I mean, he won with it in game one, but in general, the vices don't hurt me that much. Attacking here with the troll. Putting Marco on 17. Playing an often troll. Oi, oi, oi. And again, it's the Timmy altar. Really happy to see that one, you know. That's what I love about old school. You just put cards in your deck that make you happy to play them out. You know, it just gives you this happy feeling. Winning or losing, it's just a good feeling to play out those cards. Anyway, four cards in hand, but I do have the pressure on the board, which feels quite good. Marco being on 17 here, but then again, he is drawing two cards a turn where I'm only drawing one card a turn. So I think, you know, the longer the game takes, the better it will be for Marco. 
Finding a maze, yeah, that is so annoying. I mean, I am playing with stone rains in the deck, so hopefully I can find a stone rain to get rid of the uh, of the maze. I'm not playing with blood moons because I'm playing with the disc, you know, and disc of course destroys my own blood moons. That's kind of a non bow. Anyway, tapping two here, no, untapping again. I mean, I have shatters in the deck as well, so if I can just find a shatter for that howling mine or relic barrier. Attacking with both here, interesting. Let's see if Marco's going to animate his uh, Mishra's factory here and try to block the off control. That's exactly what he does. So probably upon animation, I'm going to play this uh, this bolt so that he still takes two points of damage. Exactly, so it's going to go to 15. And that's really nice. I mean, Lightning Bolt is such a great answer to Mishra's Factory. I mean, Mishra's Factory is insanely an insanely strong card, don't get me wrong, but there are a lot of answers, especially one, once it's turned into that 2-2 creature. It's so vulnerable when it's an artifact creature and a land all at the same time. Here we see a Mana Vault being played out by Marco. Tapping 6, are we going to see a Trike? Ooh, a Trike! And is he going to use it straight away or not? No, I don't think so. Because it looks like the dice has a 1 on it. But I guess it's a 3, right? Because it's a 4-4 four, four at the moment. But this is kind of annoying for me again. Because now he can hold back my forces. It's just so hard to deal damage to Marco. Tapping 3 more. Perhaps another troll. Okay, this is good. Playing out a Stone Rain, okay. Attacking with both here. So this is interesting, right? I'm giving Marco a choice now as well because he's going to block probably my Sedge. I'm going to regenerate the Sedge. And then if he wants to, okay, he's going to take the damage. Look at that. Interesting. Because what he could have done is, is, is block it on the Trike. And then he could have chosen to, to kill it afterwards. But he's choosing not to. That's quite interesting. I'm a little bit surprised about this decision. Because now all of a sudden he's on 9, you know. That's just pretty low. There's a power plant. So he's got a power plant and a mine. So if he can find a tower, he can have Tron. Tapping 4 here. Okay, he's got a clone. Oh, man. This is so bad. He's going to clone the trike. Another vice. It's looking bad for me. I got to be honest. Attacking here. Yeah, he's got a more aggressive game plan, I guess. Putting me on 16. I need a disc again. A disc can save me. You know, a disc is all I need. Four cards in hand. Now, remember, I did start off with a double mulligan as well. So I'm actually not that unhappy about how this game is going. Especially considering that Marco has had his Relic Barrier Howling Mine online for a long time here. So he's drawing just... Twice as many cards as I am. But I mean, it is looking bad for me at the moment. I'm already a game down. What can I do here? Four cards in hand. Attacking with both. Okay. So I'm really playing aggressive here. Now remember, I'm opening myself up to a lot more damage. Like he can attack me for eight next turn. Again, he's not blocking. Look at that, taking five damage. He's on four. That is risky. If I've got like double bolt, he's dead. This is a huge risk that Marco's taking. Okay, playing a Rook Egg here. This Rook Egg is super annoying for Marco, actually. This is one of the better cards that I could have played out. Not the best, but one of the better ones. I mean... A little side note here is that I don't have any regeneration mana open anymore. So Marco can also decide to kind of kill, for example, my Sedge. Kill my Often Troll here. He's going to go to 3 though because of the Mana Vault as well. Choosing not to untap the Mana Vault. I mean, he's playing with fire. He's on 3. He's playing against red. I mean, I've got 4 bolts in my deck. It is really risky what he's doing. I mean, I like the aggressive attitude, but I'm not sure if it's the right way, but we'll see. Blocking the trike, taking four from the other one, going to 12. Now, remember, you can also take the counters off, deal an additional six, put me on six. 
Another clone. Oh, he's so close. He's so close, but I don't think he's close enough, though. I don't think he's close enough because he's quite low. He needs to kill some of my trolls now. And of course, I get that 4-4 flyer. I think, I think, I think he's not going to make it. I think he made a calculation error here. I think I can win it this turn. Let's let's wait and see. Maybe maybe I'm not seeing something. You know, let's just wait and see. So I'm of course going to attack with everything. He's got to kill the flyer. He's got to kill one of the trolls. So I, I, at least then I'm going to regenerate. Let's see what he's going to do. So he's got three Triskelions. He's got nine plus one plus one counters he can use here. Exactly pointing out that my 4-4 four four is a flying bird. Let's see what he's going to do. So he's going to block the Sedge. He's going to regenerate the Sedge. And he's going to kill the 4-4 four four bird. But that means he's going to lose that one trike that he used as a blocker. And, oh, using a Howl from beyond to win the game. Yeah. I mean, he could now kill what he could do in response. He could kill the uh, the often troll, but he's not, though. He could have done that, actually. Wow, this is, this is a strange ending of this game, too. I felt like, did Marco, didn't he have enough counters anymore to kill the often? Because the moment I played uh, the, the Howl from beyond in response, he could have killed the often troll then I would have had to regenerate the often not taken the damage and yes he would have lost most of the counters but he could have untapped and kind of rebuilt with the Vesuvan double ganger and the clone in hand anyway this was a wow it went an interesting interesting game much shorter than game one but I'm happy that I won because of two reasons because I won obviously but also because it means we're gonna go to game number three Game number three, and look at that, Marco taking a mulligan here for the deciding game, game three. So he's starting with six in hand, playing out a tower, passes the turn. Whoever wins this one is going to win this match. 1-1. One, one. That was an exciting game too. Let's see what game three will bring us. There's a mine and a pass, so he's got a mine and a tower. If he can find a plan, he's got Tron turn three. Playing out my Mistress Factory, passing the turn. Can Marco get Natural Tron? No, he cannot. There's a Toladia. A legendary card. A legendary land, I should say. You can tap it. Gives you a blue mana. Or you can tap it. It takes away the banding ability of a creature. Anyway, it's my turn again. Playing a Swamp. Tapping three. Are we going to see a troll here? Exactly. There's this Setch troll. A 2-2. Two, two. But if you've got a Swamp and I have a Swamp, it gets plus one, plus one. So it's a 3-3. Three, three, and I can regenerate it for one black. So pretty good creature. A rare as well. Passing the turn back to Marco here. Let's see what he can do. Ooh, not finding anything. Just passing the turn. That's bad news for Marco. Good news for me. Bad news for Marco. Though. I can now swing in for three. Dealing at three points of damage here. Marco dropping to 17. Second main playing another Satch. A lot of pressure early on on the board. Marco really has to find something here. Didn't have a great start with the mulligan, of course. And now it looks like he's kind of stuck on mana. Only three lands for him. His deck really needs more, it seems. Okay, wow, there is a stasis. We know he's playing with two stasis, but this is, of course, desperation mode here for Marco. And, I mean, he's got no blue mana to pay for the stasis, so the stasis is going to be destroyed next turn. But this is really bad for Marco. He's really in a bad spot, it seems. I can just attack him for three here. Exactly, that's what I'm doing. And uh, it's going to go down here to 14. Passing the turn, cannot pay for the stasis. Stasis is gone. I mean, Marco, it looks like he just needs lands. If he can find a power plant to, to get Tron online, that would be a world of a difference for him. But look at that, just passing again. Is this going to be one of those game number threes? It's just a non-game. Is this going to be a walk over for me because Marco cannot find the right lance? Attacking here for eight. Going to drop down to six. Oh, that's so bad. You always hope, you know, I think this match deserved a proper game number three, but it looks like we're not going to get it. 
This is really a walkover for me here. Marco not finding the lands he needs. He's on six. And I've got so many creatures on the board already. He needs a board wipe here, but I don't think he has any. I think this is already the end of the road here for Marco in game number three. Bass is the turn here. Yeah, I mean, maybe he's got a blue fog. Who knows? Some kind of miracle card that I'm not thinking about. It's just looking super bad for him. You're attacking with everything. Alpha Strike. Probably towards the victory here. And that's it. Yep, 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 yep. So this game three was kind of a non-game. But I think the whole match was very, very entertaining. Thank you, Marco, for this match. And I think game two, it was a puzzle. But I I think you could have at least survived that, that attack. And maybe after I kind of rebuild with the clone of Vesuvian in hand, I don't know. But anyway, it was a really uh, exciting match. It was fun to play against you, Marco. I mean, that game one, what a thriller. I mean, the way you finished that game one, that was just absolutely amazing. Anyway, thank you so much for playing against me. And also thank you for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And before you go, I'd like to ask you to take a moment to like, share, and comment on this video. All this is free and really helps the channel move forward. Another thing that you can do talking about moving forward is become a patron of the show. You can become a, a sponsor of Timmy Talks. How cool is that? And Marco is also a patron of the show. And the cool thing is if you become a patron, you can also play a game against me. You also get access to the Timmy Talks Discord and you uh, can join in all the Timmy Talks online events. We host, uh, host tournaments every now and then, every couple of months. So it's pretty cool. If you like that stuff, check out uh, patreon.com slash Timmy Talks for more information. And also, when you're a patron, your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every video, including this one. Let's go to the end scroll. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Ik het dus, ik het dus, somber gezien.